is The Chris Abraham Show. I'm starting The Chris Abraham Show, Season 5, Episode 5, just in time for all y'all to listen to this uh, fire truck going by on Columbia Pike. Welcome to the world burning. This is sexy South Arlington, Virginia. My name is Chris Abraham, and this is the Chris Abraham Show. I thought I'd, I got like almost a thousand listens to my last episode, so we'll see if I can do the same thing with today's episode, season five, episode five, which is all about the state of social media from my point of view. Now, as you know, I'm a uh, choir boy, I'm a former Catholic, I'm a, an Episcopalian, I'm half Irish, quarter Hungarian and a quarter Czech, and growing up we called it Czechoslovakian, but I know that they were from Prague, not Slovakia, not uh, Bratislava, where I've been. And uh, 53, have an American literature degree with a minor in creative writing, was a LAMP uh, full-stack developer, um, also a marketing guy and a social media marketing guy. Then an ORM guy, then a social media marketing guy, then an ORM guy, and now an SEO guy. So that's where I'm at. Uh, Mostly marketing, but with a focus in technology. So where am I with regards to how I use and don't use social media, as well as how you can engage with me, and what I see in terms of the near term? All right, talk to you soon. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Christopher Abraham, Chris Abraham, from The Chris Abraham Show, and this is Season 5, Episode 5. After Season 5, Episode 4, which had a a thousand listeners in only six hours, which blew my mind and I'm sure is just a computational mistake. Uh, Maybe it has to do with the, uh, the show notes. I do not know. ChatGPT writes my show notes, just to let you know, because I'm in like Flynn. I am a uh, ChatGPT Plus guy and uh, helps me write funslow.com, which is my new SEO experiment where I try to update health and fitness content, nutrition, health and happiness content, slow jogging, slow rowing, uh, slow biking, slow cycling, slow walking, slow running, slow sprinting in all its delicious forms. Wow, I don't know what to do next. I think I will take another break and come back at you all about the State of the Union with regards to my engagement with social media. Hey, welcome back. This is the Chris Abraham Show, Season 5, Episode 5. I'm sharing a public space with a bunch of people. It's windy. I've got a dead, dead cat on my uh, little Sony um, voice dictation thing. So hopefully you don't hear too much sound. And right out of the box, I bought a new one so that I'd have them everywhere. uh, Because I keep on losing them or secreting them into other... EDC uh, admin pouches. So this one, I currently know where it's at. So there are some working men working and talking and chatting across the plaza here at Penrose Square Park, which is where I do my best work. Listen to that garbage truck. So many, so many dead sexy diesel trucks with air brakes that go by. Um, I do half of my podcast from a place called uh, Walter Reed 
community center park and that just has the sound of pickleball in the background which i feel like in terms of asmr is a much more pleasant sound that and tennis although pickleball is taking over the world so that was my shoe making squeaky noises i don't know if you can hear the background very well anyway the state of social media Sorry about that. I was checking to see if this thing was going. The state of social media with regards to me, like I'm an old timer. Like I was into BBSs uh, during the mid 80s. And then when I went to college, I didn't play with computers at all, except for playing a game called Mech or something like that and playing Tetris. I studied American literature. I read all the greats. Even when I, I mean, I had... I did have a PowerBook 170, but I didn't really do anything about it. But when I graduated, I the only job I could find was in photography, and the only photography job I could find was as a stock photography, first online stock photography agency called um, P&I, Picture Network International, and um, they ended up realizing I had a facility because I spent all of my savings at 13 on an IBM AT with 256K of RAM, dual five and a quarter inch floppy drives, and a 28, no, no, uh, 14.4, no, a 9600. It'd be a 2400 baud maybe, and I, I would upgrade from that. But I had a facility, so they sent me to this place called the Image Center. And there I got my first Linux account. I was uh, Chris A at media.sra.com. And that was cool. So I went from there. Like when I realized that there weren't any jobs for poets or photographers or, um, or literature majors if I didn't have a master's degree. I started in, I, I learned Solaris at the Image Center, which is a uh, Unix based, uh, maybe Unix based Sun Solaris. And then, of course, I learned that. I learned Command Line. I learned BSD. I learned um, Unix. I Then I learned FreeBSD. Then I learned various forms of, of GNU Linux. And uh, now all of my laptops run uh, Linux Mint, and I love it. So anyway, I was an early adopter. I bought a thing called a Ricochet, um, had internet access, had the first ADSL line in my neighborhood, like all that fun stuff, always on, uh, ran servers, web developer, all that kind of stuff, and ended up in marketing. And then my first... Like, my first things were message boards and forums. Like, my first online social media was Artswire. After, in 1993, after graduating GW, I joined a thing called Artswire, which got me connected to the Meta Network uh, because I got my first dial-up account, and it was with a company called uh, the Meta Network. Actually, no, it was with the company from the hearing-impaired web, uh, sorry, um, internet access provider, Forgot his name, but anyway, I was uh, P and I was in the same building as a uh, as a community slash web uh, service company called uh, the Meta Network TMN.com. and then I got involved in their social networking, social media, then of course the web, and then I got involved in things like Friendster. I think Friendster and MySpace were my two first social media experiences. I really caught into Friendster. Um, but um, joined NMS, New Media Strategies, in uh, 2002 and did a lot of blogging, a lot of uh, Friendster, that kind of deal. And then 2006, I jumped, I did a stupid thing, I jumped ship to go to Edelman. And while I was at Edelman, though, I got early access to uh, Facebook. And then early access to Facebook in 2006. 
And then um, I was not at South by Southwest and I did not adopt Twitter until 2007, early 2007. And then I left it alone because I didn't know anybody on there. I, I basically accessed it via, what is it, 40404 or something like that, using mostly, um, using mostly, uh, sorry about the wind, using mostly text to do things and the web. There were really no apps at first. And so I've been on Twitter for... like a number of years, 15 years. Anyway, so, uh, 16. So I'm still on Twitter. I'm a, I'm a blue check mark way before you had to pay for blue check marks, but I'm paying for blue check marks. I do all my news sharing onto, uh, twitter.com slash Chris Abraham. And I have that automatically, uh, cross posted to my own instance of Mastodon. Now, Mastodon is a platform uh, which is open source and supposedly distributed and federated and all the blue checks who felt betrayed by Elon Musk, who's a hero, um, bailed Twitter and ended up living a boring, pathetic, sad balkanized life on Mastodon. Like Mastodon is really sort of goes back to uh, Usenet or early BBS. Like it's too quirky and funky and weird and odd and eccentric and unpredictable and unreliable that there's really, unless you're a hobbyist, you're not going to get a, get the kind of, um, you're not going to get the kind of juice uh, that you are from, uh, from Twitter. Damn it. I'm sure you can hear this wind. Oy vey. Anyway, so they're not getting the kind of juice. They're just biting off their nose to spite their face. That's exactly what uh, the anti Elon uh, Twitterati are doing. They're leaving a perfectly awesome platform um, with, you know, 15 years, 16, 17 years of, of, of equity in their, um, in their, uh, URL, right? Like it's like basically giving up a perma phone number, right? So they've got, uh, on the credits of every single one of their articles and posts and going back 20 years, they've got a link to their Twitter account, to their Twitter handle. And now they're throwing it away over something stupid, but Hey, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, uh, things I know about journalists this day, these days is there, there's no such thing as journalists anymore. It's all, uh, media activism. So fuck them. Anyway. So of course I was on Facebook all the time though. There was a lot of uptick and excitement on Facebook, but I rarely use Facebook anymore. I rarely use Instagram anymore, except when I post something to Facebook, it cross posts to Instagram. I check Instagram twice a day. I consume TikTok a lot. Like I'm a huge consumer of TikTok. I'll comment, I'll engage, I'll like, I'll follow, I'll heart. Um, I don't content uh, share to TikTok. Maybe if I lose another 50 pounds and I feel pretty, maybe I'll share on TikTok. I think it might be a vanity thing. Um, I use YouTube a lot. Like I said in last episode, I got nuked by YouTube, even though I'd been on, uh, YouTube as at Chris Abraham since 2005, I was nuked, uh, for the content that I cross shared, cross posted onto, um, onto YouTube, all my podcasts and so forth. It's very sad and pathetic. Still angry about it. Not going to share anything on YouTube anymore from the podcast. So I consume TikTok. Never figured out Snapchat. Never used Snapchat. It looked like a dodgy place where I would end up getting in trouble for doing something dodgy. So I just have an account, but I don't even have the app uh, on there. 
um, I would say 50 to 75% of my, um, of my Tumblr, Instagram, and, uh, and TikTok is thirst trap. I have a type. Everybody knows I have a type and there are infinite number of people who are my type on, uh, those three platforms because they are thirst traps. That said, I do have an amazing, beautiful view of the world based on TikTok. Like the pod father, uh, Adam Curry, who is co-host of my favorite podcast for the last 16 years, No Agenda Show. Um, TikTok is a happy place, right? Like it's it's bifurcated enough that anybody can find their happy place on uh, TikTok and live in a beautiful, happy, supportive bubble. And I like that, right? Like Twitter, Twitter's a lot of shit posting, and there's a lot of shit posting on. Well, okay, I shit post a lot on Twitter, Facebook, and in uh, on Mastodon. Okay, so I discovered Mastodon uh, back in. I don't know, back when Mastodon sort of started, I created an account. But then I really started using it when No Agenda Social came on. But uh, very quickly, No Agenda Social was cordoned off as a um, as being uh, an infectious polio slash black plague slash COVID. So um, called a terrible... Um, Trolls and edge lords, they got blocked off from the federated group of other instances. Like everybody can own their own instance, everybody can join an instance. It's as if 12 million or 12,000 different Twitters existed, and each Twitter could have its own type of membership. And then uh, they're federated together uh, because they're naturally federated together until a, until, um, democratically or uh, autocratically a an instance decides that they want to block another instance because it's inconsistent with their with their stated values right so it's like clubs um having reciprocity or states having reciprocity with regards to concealed carry right uh you eventually decide whether or not you want to have reciprocity with another state or whether you want whether or not your club needs to wants to be have reciprocity with another club you know if um if you politically disagree uh you can defederate you can block you can block instances and so forth so i quickly wanted to create my own instance so i created this thing called girovic.su now i never knew that my snarky decision to buy a Soviet Union TLD was going to get me in trouble because obviously the West vanquished um, and the Soviet Union and they collapsed. But I bought my first SU TLD domain because Abraham is such a ubiquitous uh, brand amongst Jews, Muslims, and Christians that I needed to find a godless country uh, with which to, uh, with which to, on which, through which to search. And the Soviet Union had it going for the fact that it was both atheistic and also nobody's really cared about that domain since the wall fell. And the wall fell in 89 and that the web didn't even exist then. So these were, um, these SU TLDs were merely and only and exclusively used for I'm sure um, government organizations are within uh, a really uh, proto-internet Soviet Union. So I got Abraham.su and I quickly realized that I was really not enjoying, uh, nobody knew what a Gerovic was, like, so I ditched that and launched my own instance using abraham.su. So now I'm at chris at abraham.su and chris at abraham.su works. So what I did is I used a tool called MOA, I think, is that right? MOA? And it allows me to cross post. So anything I post to Twitter at Chris Abraham, 
cross posts to at Chris at Abraham.su, but people didn't like that. So since it's my own instance and only I'm on it, I created a an account called News. So news at Abraham.su is now where I cross, I post all my news reading, including Sputnik and RT and Al Jazeera and People's News and everything. Like the more diabolical and the more heterodox and the more you're going to freak out at me, the more I share it. And then that cross post to news at Abraham.su. And then I, I just live and exist and, and share and toot uh, on my Mastodon account. Like, and even that, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just not popular there. Like, I'm not uh, a, a ditto head or I'm not a, a Hillary bot. So I kind of have a life there. It's kind of okay. I'm not really resonating um, on Twitter, on Instagram. I'm not resonating on Facebook. I've got some very deep friends there. I'm not resonating anywhere. The only place that I really get excited to participate, um, and I mean, just as a commenter, is TikTok. So even I think TikTok is awesome. And it also gives me a nicer view of the world, right? Like it reminds me, and it should remind you, if you get out of blue hair world, that they're just like beautiful, smart, rural hicks. There are beautiful, smart people who have um, redneck uh, southern twangs. There are beautiful people in all countries there are beautiful intelligent smart savvy people who are in who are in traditional relationships and in gay relationships that there are beautiful wonderful um people of all genders and all ethnicities and all languages and it just really brings people down to earth right um tiktok might be subversive because it makes it really hard as a normal person, if you're a freaking uh, extremist in the first place, all you're going to do is find targets. But if you come from a place of love and generosity and kindness and sweetness and joy, you're going to find a lot of that and tons, tons, tons of wonderful thirst traps. Oh, my God. Like, it's like, um, what is it called? Uh... Uh, two for me and one for you, two for me and one for you, two for me and one for you, kind of that vibe. And like, so uh, my um, endorphins are always pumping, whether it's finding a really cute couple who's sweet. Like, it's also a great, as an only child who grew up to the, uh, grew up as the child of narcissists, who probably genetically have narcissists disorder and who has aphantasia and estam and all these other things like it's really nice to see other people model good positive behavior people who model love who model compassion who model generosity who model vulnerability who model grace who model christianity who model islam who model judaism like i don't know if it's because my last name's abraham or because all of my friends are jewish but I have such more awesome insight into orthodoxy and into um, uh, Hasid, is it Hasidism? Ha- Hasidism and into New York culture, DC culture. Uh, it's just so beautiful. Like, I would love to create content for uh, TikTok. I think I might eventually if it's not crushed. But, like, when I'm. When I just need to uh, blah, 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 my poor little brain, uh, or I'm in line, or I'm in in between gigs or whatever, I spend a lot of time just swiping uh, on TikTok, so I love it. Um, Twitter's hit or miss. Like, I think of it, I think of Twitter and uh, Facebook, really. I mean, I'm so completely bozo filtered i'm so completely what is it called shadow banned i'm so completely um restricted on so many of the spaces i'm sure i'm muted 
I'm sure I'm like restricted that and maybe I just don't play it right right like but just whatever I'm doing um and honestly the only reason I share all that news onto at news at abraham.su is because like two or three times a day I go through Washington Post I go through New York Times and I go through uh, all the other kind of ones that I do to piss all y'all off. And that's it. That's the state of where I'm at. Like, I don't use anything for marketing. I don't do any social media marketing for anybody anymore. So I'm just talking about this as a consumer. Um, I do share all of my new fun, slow blog, blog posts. Uh, you know what I might do? I might join something like um, Hootsuite or something like that again because I tend to be sharing all these uh, news tweets in a giant lump and maybe it'd be better for me to go ahead and send it into an auto queue so that the articles are shared over time but that doesn't work because news is timely right so you need to see the news right away in order for it to be timely I'm not doing marketing sharing here I'm doing uh, I'm doing news sharing and if like you don't want uh, 14 hour old news. So that's not going to work. Anyway, that's it. I don't know if this is useful to you. This is just a brain dump. I'm going to try to do this every day. And I love all y'all. I hope to see if anybody reads this or listens to this or experiences this. Or if the yesterday's thousand listens was a fluke or a glitch in the matrix. I'll talk to you soon. Come back and listen how you can connect with me. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. My name's Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show. This is Season 5, Episode 5, or as I like to say, uh, Cinco. Cinco, right? And un, deux, trois, quatre cans. I don't remember. Uh, eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, fünf. I don't know any I don't know any words anymore. Anyway, um you can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You can connect with me on Mastodon at chris at abraham.su or uh you can federate with me. There's no way. Hey, if you're a friend of mine and want uh an account on abraham.su, I don't know why you would want an account on literally my last name.su. Um if you want your own instance, you can go to masto.host. Masto.host, that's where I host. I don't host it on my own box. Um, if anybody knows how to how to join or become part of Noster, that would be cool. I'm, I'm thinking about buying a Raspberry Pi and installing a uh, cryptological Bitcoin or Ether node on there. And then running Noster through the blockchain on that um, out of my apartment. What is that? Is that stupid? Um, let me know. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter at Chris Abraham, Instagram at Chris Abraham. Um, TikTok, I think it's Chris Topher Abraham or CJ Abraham. Uh, good luck on finding me. I'll know it one of these days. It might be Christopher Abraham. Anyway, uh, Chris J. Abraham. And you can reach me on Insta at Chris Abraham. Uh, YouTube, not there anymore. Uh, oh, oh uh, my real cell phone number is plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can find me on Signal, on Telegram, on on um, WhatsApp. You can text me. Don't call me. 
because I will ignore you unless we have a date or a plan or you text me first. And I think that might be it. I used to say go to anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham, but I don't know what's going on now that it's podcaster on Spotify or whatever. Um, so just uh, find me wherever you find your podcast and like me and star me and share me and love me and subscribe to me and thumbs up me and all that other fun stuff. Love you. Talk to you soon. Hope you're well. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.